So you can take an equation of a line and write it in several different forms, the most useful of which is the slope-intercept form. This is the form right here, y equals mx plus b. It's very useful because it gives us a lot of information about the line, and it's also very easy to graph from that form. It gives us the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is always the number with x, so here m is the slope, and your y-intercept is b, um, the number without x. And the slope of the line, remember, is how the line is leaning, and the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, and that's basically a slope and a point, and if you have a slope and a point, you know everything you need to know about a line. You can graph it, and you can write the equation. Um, one thing to notice here is the equation has y by itself. So the, the last good thing about this form is you can take any equation in any form and write it in slope-intercept form simply by solving for y. So you can put any equation into slope-intercept form by getting y by itself. Don't forget, slope is always the number with x, and b is always the number without x. Sometimes they try to trick you and they write these in opposite orders, right? It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So slope is the number with x, y-intercept is the number without. Here they want us to write the slope-intercept form of a line with a slope of 3 fifths and a y-intercept of 4. This is really easy because slope-intercept form requires a slope and a y-intercept, and they just gave us a slope and a y-intercept. So we're basically, basically just going to plug these into the right spots. So I have the form here, it's going to be y equals, our slope is 3 fifths, so it'll be 3 fifths for m times x, and our b is 4, so plus 4. Right, so just given those two pieces of information, automatically we have the equation of the line. This, this equation here represents the line that satisfies those conditions. If we want to graph it, we can graph it pretty easily by plotting a couple points here. Um, b is your y-intercept, so since b is 4, that tells us we're going to cross the y-axis up here at 4. And then since our slope is 3 fifths, remember slope is rise over run, that means we're going to go up 3 and right 5 from this point. So from this point, we'll go up 1, 2, 3, and right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right about up here, so 5, 7. Right, and so now our line will go through these points, something like that. Right, so just given those two pieces of quick information, right, the slope and the y-intercept, we can come up with the equation of a line and we can graph it very easily. Given the graph of a line, we should be able to come up with the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. All we have to do is identify the slope and the y-intercept from the graph. Finding the y-intercept is really easy. That's the point where our graph crosses the y-axis. Here our y-intercept would be 3, so that means our b in the equation will be 3. So plus 3. For the slope, we just need to find two points and count rise over run to go from one point to another. So we can use that y-intercept of 3 and maybe the point here. And we're going to figure out how far up and how far over to go from one point to another. Starting at the bottom, we'd have to go up 2, so a rise of 2, and left 1. That means it's a rise of negative 1. So up 2, left 1, which is a negative 1, x. Remember, rise, up is positive, down is negative. For run, right is positive, left is negative. And obviously we can simplify this to y equals negative 2x plus 3. All right, so just given the graph, now we can come up with the equation of the line. We've looked at a couple different ways to graph equations already. This is probably the most efficient way, and that's going to be taking the equation, putting it into slope-intercept form, and then using the slope and the y-intercept to graph it. So the very first step is to take the equation and put it into slope-intercept form. That means solving the equation for y. Here I have the steps here, um, the basic algebra steps to get y by itself. You need to first move the 3x over, so I added it to both sides. Um, then you need to get y by itself by dividing by 2, so you divide everything by 2. It's important in this step that you divide these pieces by 2 separately. You don't want to make one big fraction bar over 2. That's because we want this piece to be the mx, so we want to be able to see our slope. And we want this piece to be the b, so our, we, we can see our y-intercept. We want these two pieces to be separate, basically. So I just took this equation, solved it for y, and I got y equals 3 over 2x plus 6. Now this is in slope-intercept form, so I know our slope is 3 over 2, and our y-intercept is 6. Using that information to graph, we'll start by plotting our y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is where your graph crosses the y-axis, and this is saying it crosses at 6, right about there. 
And then our slope is 3 over 2. Remember, slope is rise over run. So the number on top is rise. That means we're going to go up 3. The number on bottom is 2. That means we're going to go right 2. So from this point, we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, and right 1, 2. It's going to put us a little bit up there in space, but obviously you can see how it will keep going. So let's see, up, one, two, three, right, two, somewhere about there. And then we'll just draw our line through it. And this will be your primary um, method of graphing from here on out. It's a little bit more efficient um, than the other methods. And also it's very useful to have your equation already in slope-intercept form um, so that you can also you know, identify the slope and the y-intercept very quickly. This is our last form of the equation of a line. It's a little bit less useful or less common um, than the y equals mx plus b, the slope-intercept form. Um, but the thing about the slope-intercept form is it requires a y-intercept, which is a very specific point. This version of the equation only requires any generic point, which we're going to call x1, y1, and the slope, which we're going to call m. And when you have that information, you plug that all here into these values. So it'll be y minus the y-coordinate from your um, point, equals m, which is the slope, parentheses, x minus, and then the x-coordinate from your point. And then you have the equation of a line. We're going to do this example where we write the point-slope form of a line that passes through the point 2, negative 3, and has a slope of negative 2. This is a really easy problem because they want the point-slope form, which requires a point and a slope, and what do they give us? A point and a slope. So they literally give us the three pieces we need to plug in. So the only things to keep in mind are 2 here, this is going to be x1, and negative 3, this is going to be y1, just because that's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the point, and the slope will be m. Okay, so that's going to tell us where to plug in, so we'll have y minus, now y1 already has a negative, so we've got to be careful that we have both those negatives, y minus a negative 3, equals m, which is negative 2, parentheses, x minus x1, which is 2. This is the equation of the line, actually. This is, this is a fully um, worked out equation of the line. It just has a y and x in there. All the other numbers are plugged in. It's not that easy or useful to graph from this point, but the point is, it's an equation of a line. We have it. Now, if you want to take this equation and make it a little bit more useful, you can actually solve it for y to get it back into y equals mx plus b. So to solve it for y, we just need to get rid of this minus a negative 3, move it over, and distribute this 2 through. I'm going to do that in a couple steps. First of all, y minus a negative 3 would be the same thing as y plus 3. And over here, we're going to distribute this 2 through. So we'll have negative 2x, and then negative 2 times negative 2 will be a plus 4. And then we'll just subtract this 3 from both sides. Now this, again, this last step here, this is not necessary to solve this problem because it just said they wanted the, the point-slope form, but this is how you take the point-slope form and get it back to the slope-intercept form, which is very useful. Write the slope-intercept form of a line that passes through two points. This is the least amount of information they can give you if they want the equation of a line. That, that least amount of information is two points. So the first thing you're going to do is, any equation you have, you're going to need the slope, and that's definitely something they didn't give us. So instead, we're going to take these two points and we're going to use our slope formula. So this is the formula for the slope, and what I'm going to do is just label real quick x1, y1, and x2, y2. Right, that just helps us uh, be careful about what we plug into this formula. And let's do it. So m equals y2 minus y1. That's going to be negative 4 minus 5, because that's what we labeled as y2 and y1. And then on the bottom, x2 minus x1, that's going to be 1 minus, be careful, x1 already has a negative, so it's going to be parentheses negative 2, just like that. Um, on the top, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. On the bottom, 1 minus a negative 2 is a positive 3. This gives us a negative 3 as our slope. So now what we have is, we actually have two points and we have a slope. Think about what we wanted last time. We wanted um, a point and a slope, right? Now we have actually two points and a slope, so we have more than what we need. So we're going to start with that form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we have two options here for the point to use. I'm going to go ahead and use this one because it's already called x1, y1. But you could use this point as x1 and y1 
and you'll still get the same, the similar, no, you'll get the same answer. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use that first point though. So it'll be y minus y1, which is 5 on the point we're using, equals m, that's our slope, which was negative 3, times x minus x1, which is negative 2. That is the equation of the line in point slope form. Don't forget, they're asking us to find the equation in slope intercept form. So we're going to have to do that one extra step where we move the minus 5 over and we distribute the 3 through. So let's make a little room here. So right here we're going to, um, let's go ahead and, let's see, what should we do first? We'll add the 5 to both sides. And this minus a negative 2 right here, I'm just going to rewrite this as minus a negative 2, same thing as plus 2. So um, I'm going to put the plus 5 out here real quick. And we'll get y equals negative 3 times, this will become x plus 2, and now we have a plus 5 on the outside. And now we'll distribute that negative 3 through, and we'll get y equals negative 3x minus 6 plus 5. And minus 6 plus 5 is just a plus 1, or sorry, minus 1. So we get y equals negative 3x minus 1. There we go. All right, so we're going to kind of put this all together and try to solve this problem on page 320, number 28. We have a uh, direct satellite receiver sales. They decreased from 16.3 million in 2004 to only 12 million in 2009. Model these data by a linear equation and predict uh, the year when the sales will drop to 8 million. Well, we are given two points here. It says uh, it decreased from 16.3 million in the year 2004, that's one point, to 12 million in 2009. Now we can use these raw points, these raw years, but remember it's sometimes nice to not have to use the raw years and because these are numbers like 2004 or 2009, we can treat 2004 since that's our first year like year zero. And then the year 2009, that'll be five years after 2004, we'll just call that year five. Everything should work out the same. We just have to be careful when we do, when we predict a year or do a prediction with the year. Um, we're not going to get an actual year, right? We're going to get a number like 10 maybe. And 10 is going to stand for 10 years after 2004, which would be 2014. So let's take these two points. Start with the 2004. Remember, time is x, so that's going to be our x coordinate. And instead of 2004, I'm just going to use the point um, 0. So 0 for year 2004. And then 16.3 million uh, will be the number of sales. That's our first point. And then the second one is um, 2009, which we said was five years after 2004. So it'll be five. And the sales were 12 million. So there we go. And you can see this is already a little bit nicer than having 2004 with the 16.3 and then 2009 with the 12. Because that'll just make our arithmetic a little bit more complicated. So we have two points. Now it says model these data by a linear equation and then use it to do a prediction. We need to come up with the equation of a line and let's go ahead and shoot for y equals mx plus b because it's usually the easiest or, or the, it's actually the best form to have it in. Now we only have two points. No matter what we're going to need a slope, right? And we don't have a slope yet, but we have the slope formula that lets you take two points and calculate the slope. So we're going to call this point x1, y1 and this one x2, y2, and we're going to plug this into our slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right, so in this case, our y2 is 12, our y1 is the 16.3, our x2 is 5, and our x1 is 0. So when you crunch these numbers, um, you get about negative 4.3 over 5. Um, this is okay. You could also turn this into a decimal or something. Um, since it's kind of like a fraction, let's go ahead and just keep it a fraction. The only problem is we don't really like to have decimals inside our fraction. So since we have negative 4.3, if we multiply that by 10, oops, by 10, uh, remember multiplying a number by 10 just moves the decimal over once to the right. So that's just going to give us a negative 43. 
right? Because you're just multiplying by 10, moving that decimal once to the right, you get a negative 43. So that's a nice whole number. The catch is you can't just multiply one by 10. You have to do the same thing the top and bottom in order to keep it the same number. So we're actually going to call this, this slope here um, negative 43 over 50. All right, so that just makes it a nice fraction. Uh, okay, so now we have a slope, that's our m, and we have two points. Well, um, what we're going to do, or what we could do, is go to our point-slope form, right? We have a slope, we have a point, in fact we have two points to choose from. We could use point-slope form and get our answer. Now, we could cheat actually a little bit as well because, remember, since we set this, um, this year as year zero, this is automatically our b, because remember b, your y-intercept, um, if you're on the y-axis, that means x is zero. Since we know x is zero here, this is the point that goes with it, that means this is going to be our starting value, this is going to be our b. So we automatically know that that is our b. Now, this wouldn't have happened if um, we used the actual year 2004 and the actual year 2009. right? If we used those years, that wouldn't be our b, we'd have to do a little bit more work to get it, um, and then we'd have to, uh, we'd have to go to y, the, the point slope form. Okay, so in this case, though, automatically we know our b, and I'll just make a note of that here, b equals 16.3. And that's good news, because look what we have. We have a slope, negative 43 over 50. We have a y-intercept, b, which is 16.3. And that means we have an equation, y equals, I'll go ahead and just write the form real quick. y equals mx plus b is what we want. We have y equals negative 43 over 50 x, right, that's our m, plus b, which is 16.3. So there's the first part of this problem. We have our, um, our linear equation that models the data, and it's in y equals mx plus b. So that's the first part. Now what we're going to do is we want to predict the year when sales will drop to 8 million. Let me get back to our equation real quick. Okay, predict the year when sales drop to 8 million. You have to keep in mind what your variables stand for to answer questions like this. X is the number of years after the year 2004, in fact, right? And Y is going to stand for um, the number of sales in millions. So when they ask us predict the year, they're clearly asking us for an x value. And it's very important that you identify that before you start doing the second part of the problem. They're asking us for an x value, and if you want an x value, they better have given you a y value. Well, they did, right? They said predict the year when the sales were 8 million. Y are your sales in millions. So all we have to do for this problem is plug in 8 for y and solve for the x that goes with it. So let's do that. We're going to plug in 8 for y. And then we're going to solve this equation for x. So if you solve this equation for x, there's a couple things you have to do. Um, the first thing is you're going to have to divide, or sorry, um, subtract 16.3 from both sides. You're going to move it to the other side. They cancel out here. And over here, you're going to get a negative 8.3 equals negative 43 over 50x. Okay, and then the next thing is, we want to get x by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by this number, negative 43 over 50. It looks complicated, but remember, you can just throw this in the calculator to get an answer out of it. And I, I recommend that. I know this is the beginning of the semester, but I want you to realize we're going to use the calculator a lot in this class, and that's okay. In theory, you should know how to do this arithmetic by hand, but in practice, you will never have to. Um, for the final exam, for any exams you take, any work you do, you should have the graphing calculator right next to you because this class is more about exploring uh, different fields of math rather than arithmetic. So don't be afraid to use the calculator. Okay, so if you plug this into the calculator, um, you should get a number like... Um, a number like... It's going to be a long decimal, so we'll round it to about two places or so. Uh, 9.65.
Okay, now let's think about what we were solving for. We were solving for the year in which the sales will be about 8 million. We just got 9.65, so are we going to say the year 9.65 or the year 9 or the year 10? Well, keep in mind what our x stands for in this equation. Since we didn't use the year 2004, we used it as year 0. x is the number of years after 2004. So if you take this number and add it on to 2004, let me just define this real quick, 2004 plus the 9.65, you get something like 2013.65. Right, so what year will the sales reach um, 8 million? In the year 2013, a little bit over halfway, right? So 2013 would be your answer here. And that's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hope this helps.